for the infant up until about the age of four, not being attached to an event and therefore not attached to time. So they live in the brain, live in the mind, uh, without a history, um, an event history. So when you are, are uh, grow up and become uh, involved with an intimate other in adult life, or anybody else, I mean, these memories are just there uh, as a part of the uh, uh, in the amygdala. They are uh, memories that are are not organized. They're just sort of the best I can get out of what I understand from talking to Dan Siegel and others who have done this work is that they're just there and they are available to be triggered. So. When an event occurs in your adult life uh, that uh, is similar to the event that occurred in childhood, which produced the feeling, you will then have the feeling, but because you have no event memory, you won't attach it to an event. You'll attach it to the trigger in adult life, which is often your partner. So you can't say, oh, you remind me of your mother, uh, or that reminds me of my mother, because there's no memory of that event. So, given that there's nobody there, you assume that this emotion is, in fact, triggered by or caused by the partner uh, who's present when this uh, memory, this feeling memory, is activated. So now, when, when, yeah. when you say an event is similar to what happened in the past, it, it's, it, it's, it's really could be tr- totally different in level. So, for example, if you were really aban- poorly abandoned as a child, but your partner walks out of the room without talking to you, I mean, that little mount can trigger it, can it not? Absolutely. Any any sort of similar event, uh, which, uh, yes, which mimics in some way a childhood event which was not recorded can trigger the memory. And it can be small. Like, I know that my childhood feelings are triggered by uh, Helen's face. Uh, I now know, I've I've done enough work on myself uh, to know that, uh, I now know that my mother's face was, um, she was so preoccupied, she had nine children, lived on a one-horse farm, my father was dead, and she was taking care of all these kids, and she did not uh, smile a lot, and I, I, uh, I, I got a memory one time uh, that came from my fifth or sixth year of looking at my mother's face waiting for a smile. So I know that that was an earlier thing because my father died when I was one year old. So you can imagine how busy she was. So my trigger that I now know is connected to my mother, but did not for a long time, is connected to, to Helen's face. So I have to regulate when Helen's, uh, you know, concentrating or when she's uh, disturbed herself about something and is not smiling and looking at me warmly. It's not about me uh, most of the time. I sometimes do this, but, but most of the time it's about her own internal states. And so, But if I didn't know that, then I would say, you know, that she's, um, she's not available, she's not present, and I can't count on anything from her.